Hi, today in South Africa we're going to make a chicken poiki and I will explain how we do that in a few easy steps. Carrots and we have over here some onions, uh, we have some olive oil in that canister, some chicken thighs with bones in which gives it a lot of flavour and of course over here we have some, some uh, diced tomatoes. We really make it nice, we have sweet corn here, you can see those lovely, if you have fresh ones you can cut those and then we have also fresh mushrooms. It always goes well with chicken. And we put those in at the very end. So they're here in our little bush kitchen. So you have to light a small fire with some briquettes and then you start heating up the pot. And once the pot is hot, you put some oil and you begin to fry off the chicken first. Well, here you can see the chicken. Um, and I'm frying it off in small pieces so that you really brown it nicely and uh, you don't want to burn the onions and stuff. So there's the pot, nice and hot, and we're just browning off the chicken. And what you do is um, you make up this package here. This is a, a mixture of brown sugar, lentils, curry powder, some gravy mix, and salt, and pepper, and raisins, and it has a few other spices, um, mainly uh, things like curry and so on, and uh, roast paprika. Then what we do is we stir, while the chicken is frying, we stir a little bit of the lentils, and then mix them to each batch of frying chicken. And so you, what you have is the, the lentils um, soak up the, the flavor in the fat, and you slowly do that. Then you put the lid on, might be hot, and let that keep frying for a few seconds. So we've taken all the chicken out, as you can see, and we're now going to fry the onions separately in a little bit of olive oil. Um, and uh, they just add to the amazing aroma the aromas come from the curry powder and the paprika. Sometimes you put a little bit of cumin. And uh, if you'll just come in here now and have a look, you'll see that the onions begin to sort of clean up the bottom of the pan and it really makes it look and smell delicious. Great. Okay, so this is a kind of a secret weapon. And if you come a little closer, you'll see that this is a uh, uh, aluminium uh, percolator actually with a hexagonal bottom and it has a, a pipe right through the middle and what we're going to do now if you watch closely we're going to separate this is the frying onions they're all nice and soft now what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick move here we move the onions a little bit to the side and then what we do is we put this at the very bottom of the pot you see like that and then we quickly pour some fluid in there just to make sure everything burns with water. And then what we do quickly is we start to layer all the chicken in here in layers. Put the meat in first. This goes in lovely, nicely browned off. You can see that. Put some of these lovely lentils. And then the chicken goes in. Now look closely and you'll see the steam coming out of the top of that. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the percolating sound. So this is what happens now, it's going to circulate the juices and we're going to quickly put those in. It's kind of a, this next step is quite important because you've got to get it done quickly because the, the coals are right underneath the pot and we've got to move them away so we don't burn anything. And that's why we put a little bit of fluid in there. Now I put the potatoes in, so we put the heaviest vegetables in first, essentially the potatoes. You can hear it bubbling away there, we put the potatoes in. Then we put the carrots in a kind of a layer, see that, so that we don't have to stir it ever. And so now it's really getting ready, we're almost finished. If you look closely, there's a bit of a breeze, but if you look closely, you'll see the steam and you'll see the percolating effect of that. Isn't that fantastic? And that spreads the juice around. Now what I'm going to do now is pour a little bit of peeled tomatoes in there. Now I'm going to keep the lid on because otherwise it's going to, it's going to, it's going to spit all over me. Now what I do is I, I take the coals and I move them away from underneath the pot because the pot is so hot that it will cook regardless but we do not want to burn the onions and the meat so we move them away in a nice little just from the outside of the pot then it doesn't burn the pot and if you bring the camera right up close you'll and just listen to the sound of the the percolating rumbling cooking It's a bit hot now, it'll cool down in a minute, and then we're all set. Now, you need about a cup of fluid at least 
you want to keep it fairly moist. And what I've done is I've added the last bit of the, the special mix that I made in the last bit of water here. And then, uh, in fact, I added a little bit of garlic as well to ensure that there's plenty, plenty of liquid in there. So, as you've seen, it's a no stir poiki, a no stir Dutch oven mix. Meat, carrots, potatoes, and then some of the tomato seasoning. And then at the very end, we're just going to put some mushrooms and carrots. Mushrooms and corns around the top like that, and you can see that the the, uh, the ash doesn't do any harm either. <laughs> you can see how the, the the juice is going to spit and dribble down through that mix right there, and there you have it. Now you leave that, no stir. It will take about two hours, and all you have to do is slowly replace the coals as you go. And look at the lid, you see how the juices spit up on here and they drizzle, they circulate through the whole meal. So now it's rumbling away nicely and uh, as you can see it's been a while so the coals are running low. So what we do now is we take a few extra uh, charcoals and we just make another kind of a another layer and as time goes on they will they will start to burn and you keep the heat going for about two hours. Usually one more layer will do. The pot retains a lot of heat. And so we put these coals on. And it, uh, they're actually charcoal briquettes. And uh, let's just put another layer. You can see the charcoal briquettes right there. We just make another layer. And I'm gonna go in a minute and have a lie down. And in an hour and a half, this will be ready for the very last final stages of the cooking. So just before we serve it, maybe 20 30 minutes ahead of time we uh, we take this packet of soup it's chicken soup in this uh, in this occasion and we really want to thicken it up actually no. <laughs> so to thicken it up we're going to use this packet of mushroom soup and um, as you can see it's fairly thick already and we like a little bit of sauce but we just add a little bit of uh, mushroom soup it has to be bubbling so that we get the soup to be sort of well cooked in and we leave it then for about 15 to 20 minutes. We don't add a lot of soup, just enough to give it a bit of body. As you can see, all the vegetables are intact and we've got lovely pieces of chicken there that are so tender they just fall off the bone. So having added the soup, we leave it now again for about 20 minutes and then we will serve it with a nice glass of red wine. I mean, sorry. <laughs> And after, here's a lovely <laughs> piece of chicken. And after about 20 minutes, we'll serve this with some lovely rice and a few bread rolls. Thank you very much. Over and out. <laughs> and here we are now just serving it up with a little bit of rice. And uh, a few bones in here it looks from, quite superb. Um, you can see the final product in the poiki or the Dutch oven as we know it. A little bit of gravy on top of the, uh, yeah. the mix. You see the textures pretty nice, a little, bit, a little bit ruddy because you like to soak it up with the bread or the rice. Enjoy your dinner, bon appetit. Camera action. So just before we serve it, maybe 20, 30 minutes ahead of time, we uh, we take this packet of soup, it's chicken soup in this, uh, in this occasion, and we really want to thicken it up. Actually, no. <laughs> So here we have our chicken soup, we have our chicken soup. So to thicken it up, we're gonna use this packet of mushroom soup. So having added the soup, we leave it now again for about 20 minutes and then we will serve it with a nice glass of red wine. I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and after, here's a lovely <laughs> piece of chicken. And after about 20 minutes, we'll serve this with some lovely rice and a few bread rolls. Thank you very much. Over and out. 